Hello, I'm Chris. And I'm Cherie. We're at Technomania.com. This is our bus, our home on wheels here behind us. And today we wanted to talk to you about our generator. Uh, last year when we were having our bus modifications done at Master Tech in Elkhart, Indiana, we swapped out our old generator and put in a 2500 watt propane powered generator and we had a lot of people question us on the decision. People thought we were crazy to downsize from a 7500 watt generator to a 2500 watt generator. They're like, what, 2500? That's not even enough to run an air conditioner. How can you use a 2500 watt generator for a bus this big? And well, there's actually kind of a problem with the way generators have always been done with RVs. You know, generators are sized to um, start up, uh, to handle both air conditioners kicking on at the same time. Which isn't necessarily a typical operation that you have in an RV, yes. or actually you have control over. Right. And now an air conditioner, when it starts on, has a huge initial surge current that is basically about twice what its ongoing current is. So you've got an air conditioner that might need 1,500, 1,600, 1,700 watts of power. That initial surge is 3,000 to 4,000 watts. And while well, the generator needs to be big enough to handle that surge and not stall out. Um, so what sort of crazy thing are we doing to have a 2500 watt generator and still get by with running an air conditioner? It can be done. So let's start back with why the decision to go with a 2500 watt. Now ideally we would have liked to gone, if we were downscaling our generator, we would have liked to gone with something probably around 3000 to 4000 watts. Would have, would have been, would have been ideal. slightly more ideal. Um, but we're making do with a 2500 watt and the reason that we did that is our old generator was in the old air conditioning bay of the bus. Now this was a transit bus, so this is where all the equipment used to sit. And, and it was a monster. It was but huge. It, it was a great ventilated bay for the old generator. And it was a mid-1980s diesel power generator. It was loud. It was not ideal for RVing or being friendly to our neighbors. We always wanted to downscale it. So we took advantage of when we did the all the big bus upgrades last year is we decided to rip out the generator entirely and then we're like well rather than put something else in that space maybe we could take advantage of a different space and well on our bus actually right behind us this front bumper um, is normally the spare tire bay the bumper can be unbolted and screws uh, and drops down and there's a space behind there for our spare tire um, we're not going to change our own tire on the side of the road. So we're calling CoachNet. We're calling CoachNet. <laughs> so why? And we could, we have two different tires. Front and back tires are different. Which, which spare would we carry? So why not take advantage of that bay? Put something you hardly ever need to access there. A generator. Unfortunately, that bay is not very tall. So we had to seek out the a generator mostly by the constraints of height. So the best, the biggest generator we could find was the Onan 2500 watt propane generator that we were able to put in that bay. But Which it, was a crazy decision too, because we had gone propane free before <laughs> this, but we had already made the decision to go with the Precision Tip hydronic system, which was propane powered. So we'd already kind of made that leap. So then putting the generator on propane made a lot of sense for us as well. So, and this whole process then opened up a huge bay in the side of our bus that is now a great storage bay, also where we have well ventilated bay to store the propane tanks. And now we've got a great generator tucked away and well, now people always say, well, yeah, but still, you will that actually start your air conditioner? So we're going to show how that works and how the, the magic help of our, our Victron boosting inverter makes letting a smaller generator power bigger loads work out really, really well. So as a quick recap, our electrical system consists of 800 watts of solar panels on our roof. We have 600 watts of panels that we can ground deploy. Those are flexible panels. We have 500 amp hours of lithium ion batteries at 12 volts, thereabouts, uh, that are in our bay. And those are coming up from five years that we've been running them. And we will have a report out in about a month on those, mm -hmm. on our recap of those. Plus we have a 3000 watt Victron MultiPlus, which is a boosting or hybrid inverter. So this is how that all comes together with the 2500 watt generator. Cool. Well, come inside. Let's start the generator up. Bye, Cam. <laughs> hey. So we have right here our uh, Victron CCGX control panel. And we actually um, wired this to control our generator. It's a little bit of a tricky electrical project, but um, actually very, very handy because then we can have this smartly control the generator. 
lets us do things like set a time. So hey, let's just run the generator for 30 minutes to give us a nice little charge here. We can actually all do all these controls remotely as well. So from afar uh, via the internet via our phones. Okay. There it is, kicking into gear. Now we'll wait for the generator to stabilize and we'll soon see the shore power begin to flow in from the generator and into the bus. Well, it doesn't come from the shore power when you're on the generator, does yeah. it? Yeah, it would be nice if the label was smart enough to change. So a shore um, power in this case is a generator. <laughs> so there we are, it's kicking in and then you'll see the um, charger will kick in in just a second. You hear the sound of the generator change as the load comes on. And now we're actually charging our batteries, putting 100 amps into our batteries, charging them up because the solar can't quite keep up here. But, well, this generator doesn't have a whole lot of headroom, so we're going to want to put uh, some, put, dedicate most of this power to running the air conditioner on this sweltering day. So, now let's try turning on an air conditioner and see what happens. So, over to here, this is the uh, controls for our Dometic uh, Penguin 1500 BTU uh, air conditioner. And turning it on. Make it set it for nice and cool in here, 70 degrees. And watching here, you can see the wattage kicked in, 825 watts, 400 watts. That was the a surge for the fan blowers coming out. So now we got a nice breeze. This air conditioner has a slight delay before the compressor kicks on. And you saw that little flash of light and all the power from the generator dropped away. That was that surge. The generator couldn't keep up with the initial surge but our batteries could. So the Victron pulled all the power from the battery. We only saw the slightest little glitch in the lights. Computers are fine with that. And then now the generator is coming back on. And the, yeah, the generator didn't actually shut off. No, the, the generator battery. didn't shut off. It's just the, the inverter diverted the power to the batteries instead of the generator to get over that, basically a speed hump of power. But now we are running the air conditioner completely off the generator. And we are still have a little power left over to charge our batteries. in New York State in their state parks, staying up in the Adirondacks. Most of the campgrounds up here in the state park system do not have hookups. So they're all dry camping and our generator's coming in really handy here because it's mid-July and we are having some pretty hot temperatures midday. They have generator hours from 4 to 7 p.m. at most of the campgrounds, which is allowing us to get a little cool air and filling in where the sun may not be able to top up our batteries. At our last campground, we're in a shady spot. We only got about three hours a day of solar, so we did have to top up a couple times with the generator for about an hour in the afternoon, and we also used that opportunity to cool off. Um, this campground that we're at, we're probably gonna get ample solar at during the day. We'll still probably run the AC a little bit in the afternoon just to cool off, or maybe we'll go take a swim in the lake. And then, one more thing. Now, some people will ask, well, what if you want to run both air conditioners at once? And how will the system work with that? And, well, that would be too big of a load for our inverter to handle pulling temporarily off the battery while that surge current hits. So if two air conditioners come on, it goes into overload, power shuts down. But if we need two air conditioners, that's when it really, really makes sense for us to go find a place with hookups. Because when, when, it's, when it's that hot, we don't want to be running living constantly with the generator running. That's just way too hot for off-grid life. Now, we're not really generator people. Our generator, we installed it back in September. That's when we got the bus back out of MasterTech. It's now July. We haven't even hit our 20-hour break-in period yet on ours. We don't use it that much. We do a lot of dry camping. We do try to seek out and follow the weather so that we're not having to use air conditioning. That's a better way for us. And uh, the solar usually keeps up when we're dry camping for most of our basic needs with the computers, lights, and we do cook on all electric. Um, so generators really, we didn't want to optimize with a large one and giving up that much storage space in our RV. And that's allowing us now to have things like electric folding bikes and other toys that are enhancing our lives and allowing us to get out more instead of being indoors where we might want air conditioning anyway. So it's working out really well for us. 
generator now going on almost a year that we've been using it. 2,500 watts, works for us.